In this video, the last one, I'm going to show you how to do a Lewis structure of a polyatomic ion. So for this one, we're going to do carbonate. Carbonate is CO3, and it has a negative 2 charge. The first thing we do is add up all of the valence electrons for the atoms in the formula. We're finally going to do something with the second sentence. Add extra electrons if the formula has a negative charge. We would remove electrons if it had a positive charge. So carbonate is carbon, which is four valence electrons. There are three oxygens, which are each going to have six. And then it's got a negative two charge. So there are two extra electrons in our formula. So this is 18, 19, 20, plus four. That's 24 electrons for step one. For step two, divide that number of electrons by two to get the pairs. So if I divide that by two, I find that I have 12 pairs of electrons. Step two. I'm going to place the symbol for the least electronegative element in the center and surround it with the symbols for the other elements. Well, carbon is farther to the left on the periodic table, meaning it's less electronegative. So I'm going to put the carbon in the middle, and I'm going to surround it with the three oxygens. Step four, use one pair each to connect the non-central atoms to the central atom and subtract that from my total. So here's one, two, three bonds, so 12 minus 3 means I have nine pairs left, so that's step four. Step five, put pairs of electron dots on the non-central atoms to fill their octets. So I've got nine pairs, I've got three oxygen, so it looks like I can just give three pairs to each. So there's one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three and that takes care of all my pairs. I don't have extra pairs, so I'm gonna skip step six, move on to seven. If I ran out of pairs, check each atom for an octet. Well, we know that the oxygens do because we put six electrons plus a bond, that's eight. But if we check the carbon in the middle, the carbon's only making three bonds, so that's only six electrons. It does not have an octet. So that means we need to see, could we move some lone pairs to make double bonds because I've got carbon and oxygen. They're both in CNOPs. So I'll just pick one. It doesn't matter. They're all basically the same. So if I just pick one pair of electrons and say, you're now a double bond. So I'm going to take my eraser tool and say, you're not non-bonding anymore. And now I've got a double bond. Now I check for an octet. Carbon has two, four, six, eight. Perfect. Oxygen, two, four, six, eight. Perfect. So everything has an octet. So check. Now we move on to step eight, where we're going to check for formal charge. So formal charge is the number of valence electrons minus the total of non-bonded electrons plus the number of bonds. So for this, I think I'm going to have to like number them because I have some oxygens that are different from each other. So we'll call this oxygen type A. How about a letter? These are both going to be type B right, because this one's got a double bond and these do not. So for oxygen type A, oxygens have six valence electrons minus one, two, three, four non-bonded electrons, and then there are two bonds. So that adds up to six, six minus six is zero. So for oxygen type A, the formal charge is zero. For oxygen type B, let's do that up here. We have six valence electrons for an oxygen minus one, two, three, four, five, six non-bonded electrons and one bond. So that adds up to seven. Six minus seven is going to be negative one. So the formal charge on oxygens type B, are, they're negative one. They're both going to be negative one. And then now let's do for the carbon. Carbons have four valence electrons. It has no non-bonded electrons, and it's making one, two, three, four bonds. So four minus four is zero. The formal charge on the carbon is zero. So this doesn't apply. This doesn't apply. We must have a formal charge, so we make sure that it's on the most electronegative element. Well, it's the, ex the external ones because it would have been in the, it couldn't be in the middle. So then, if the formula had a charge to begin with, and it did, carbonate was negative two, we make sure that the formal charge matches the ion charge. Well, here's a negative one, and here's a negative one. That adds up to negative two. So then what we would do is we would put, let's switch back to red pen, we would put brackets around the whole formula, 
and we would write that charge on the outside of the bracket. So there's negative two right there. So all this blue stuff we could get rid of. We wouldn't have to put where the formal charge is. Sometimes people ask you to show that, but most of the time they just want you to show that the entire structure in brackets has a negative two charge. So the last thing we do is we're gonna check for the number of electron domains. So let's switch to the highlighter. So in this case, our central atom has a double bond and it has some single bonds. So there's one single bond, another single bond, and a double bond. So that's a total of three electron domains. And that's the most complicated example I'm gonna do for you guys.